What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Josh Coker here, AKA Josh Miss Prime. You know what it is. Coming at you with another episode of Polymathics, the channel that helps you become a modern day Renaissance man. And in today's episode, we have a very special guest, Suzanne Sherwood, AKA Auto Susie. Go and check her out on Instagram. And we are going to talk about Fallen, archetypes. yeah, archetypes. Particularly, we're going to talk about. Actually, this is more like character arcs, and we're going to talk about tragic heroes and redemptive story arcs. Story arcs, yeah. and there's a lot to cover. We may break this up. Actually, you know what? For this one, we'll talk about the tragic arc, uh, story arc, and then in another video right after this, we'll talk about the redemptive. That way, it can be separated. Now bear with us, I'm driving, we're squeezed in here, and we both just ate a fuck ton of chicken, so it's, it's like settling in. Okay, um, so first of all, what, what, what are your basic questions about a tragic hero? Um, what makes them different from a villain? Tragic always have to be sad. Those are some common ones. Um, what are some common? What, what is a story I can look at to compare? Okay, those are all really good questions, and I I think that it's gonna offer a good discussion. So let's get into it. And also, real quick, before I answer those questions. The whole, the whole reason we're having this conversation is predicated on, I do the monomyth, AKA the metamyth, AKA the hero's journey, right? Story, story structure. And Suze is working on uh, this counseling program and she's trying to incorporate that into the, cause she's going to school to be a counselor. So she's trying to incorporate that into um, the, The, when you sit down with the people, the group session? Yeah, okay. a, a group counseling session. Because, and the reason why this is applicable is because, one, the, the metamyth, the monomyth, the hero's journey is applicable to real life situations. That's why we as people engage so much with fiction stories in the first place. It's because we can empathize with those heroes. We can feel ourselves in those stories. And the reason why myth is so important in, in humankind is because it helps guide those people in that society on the proper ways to live in that society. And so, um, you know, when you're dealing with people who have possibly had a tragic story arc in their own life story, or you, in the next episode, we'll talk about redemptive story arcs. You're hoping that they can have that. You wanna identify what are some key components that, that they can relate with so that they can see other people, maybe possibly some people that they, that they consider heroes in, in like a fiction sense, um, that they can relate with and kind of uh, embody, right? So, now with that being said, let's jump back into the questions first question was, is there a difference between a, there was almost an accident there with, it looked like a Lamborghini. Yeah, it was a Lamborghini. So that and was some great. really, some Toyota Corolla. Yeah, and some really, really junky car, but the Lamborghini would have been at fault. Yeah. Uh, okay. Best of luck to them. I'm going to wait it out here because we're pretty much at a red light. Yeah. So. I would not have. I would have been the Lamborghini. The listeners are probably like, Jesus Christ, answer the question already. Uh, okay, so there is a bit of a difference between a tragic hero and a villain. However, a hero, any hero, tragic or regular, can become a villain. And a villain can also become a hero. Uh, keep that in mind. Because when it comes to fiction, those are just kind of, I don't want to say arbitrary, but they're just based on 
what the character is doing at that moment in time. Not it, it, it has nothing to do with their actual character. So, so this is the part that I think is um, the most important because people identify <clears throat> sometimes you make so many mistakes in your life that you internalize too much that you're the bad guy. I'm just a bad guy. I can't. I, I'm not, never going to get better. I'm just in the internship that I'm doing now. I'm just an addict. I'm just to this. I'm just to that. I can't. That's what I do. Right. But um, these shows and like these stories that we that create the fabric of our society say that's not always true. Right. People can grow and develop and change, and that's part of the reason why we're doing this. So, if we look at it though from like a, a purely functional standpoint, what is the difference between a hero? What is the difference between a villain? How can one be be the other and all this other stuff just to kind of clarify a hero um, is essentially someone who goes into the unknown world aka the magical world and if you don't know what that is there are other videos that I have discussing it but they go to a place that they've never been before in search of essentially this thing called the boon or the reward or the elixir something that's going to help revitalize society and in turn, this boon also usually helps the hero overcome their, their flaw. And that flaw that the hero starts out with in the, in, in the beginning of the story is something that is preventing them from reaching their fullest potential. Now this flaw alone, kind of at, at where it is in the beginning of the story, may not be so bad that it's going to kill the hero or cause them into ruin right away. But if the hero continues down the path and, and continues down the quote-unquote dark side, then, um, then it, it, it has a possibility to become a fatal flaw or a tragic flaw. And so um, with all that kept in mind, the hero is the one who goes into the, the unknown world, retrieves the boon, and then, this is the key point, returns it to the normal world to revitalize society so it's the hero unleashing the power usually the positive power of the boon or negating or preventing the negative power of the boon from being relinquished on the uh, the normal world that uh, that makes them a hero and the example Susan and I talked about this earlier today or yesterday uh, she's like okay give me an example of that if Back in the old hunter myths, if the hero is a hunter, they're a young boy, just reached the age that they can go out hunting, they get trained up, they go into the quote unquote unknown world, which is like the woods, the forest, a place they've never been before, to go out on the hunt, their first hunt. And the goal is to get the boon, which is an animal, or several animals, a rabbit, a deer, whatever. And the thing that makes them heroic is not them surviving the woods. It's not them, um, you know, getting the animal. It's them taking the animal back to the tribe and sharing it with the rest of the people. Thus, allowing the positive aspect of the boon to be to be distributed amongst society and therefore revitalize society. Now you got to understand from. In that time era, that, that is a critical aspect of humankind that was required for us as a race to continue to prosper. And a very similar uh, kind of, uh, a very similar reflection of that myth would be when we went from hunter-gatherers to basically like planters and irrigation and farming then the seed was the boom. And you had to bring the seed and you had to bring it back and you had to harvest it. And so many of the, the heroes weren't, weren't necessarily hunters, they were farmers that would take the seed from a barren land and bring it to a prosperous land to help it grow and then bring it back to society. So hopefully that answers what is a hero, okay? That's, that's ideally what a hero is. Now what is a tragic hero? 
A tragic hero is someone who, at any point in the adventure, usually it's before they cross the threshold, on the way out into the unknown world, or on the way back from the unknown world, the hero will fall into, um, into their flaw, their fatal flaw, so deeply that there's no way out. And if you look at several of Shakespeare's plays, the key figures, and usually the title name of the play, is the person who has fallen into their fatal flaw. Romeo and Juliet, King Lear, Hamlet, uh, and on and on and on. So those are good examples. An example from modern fiction and, and from our personal favorites is Darth Vader, uh, Anakin Skywalker, right? And the the while the prequels may leave a lot to disappoint uh, original trilogy fans, what they did a really good job of is showing Anakin's transition from just a normal kid who was supposed to be the chosen one, you know, performing the hero duties to completely falling into his flaw of wanting total systematic control and and not allowing things to just kind of be free flow. And then and then we saw what happens, right? Like all his whole the whole Jedi Order ends up being massacred. He plays a part in it. Um, he he loses his wife, his kids are dispersed, he doesn't even know about them. So like uh, that is the tragedy. That is a tragic hero. A villain, on the other hand, now this is this is where things get a little tricky. And stop me if at any point like there's a question. A villain, on the other hand, is um, an antagonist that has an evil intent. So there's two things there, right? What is an antagonist? An antagonist is anybody who's opposed to the hero's goal. So. Let's take that first example of the hunter myth and say, okay, um, Hunter A, this story is about Hunter A, and they are the hero of that story. And they're gonna go out into the unknown world, catch a deer, and bring it back. Then the antagonist would be anybody, the antagonistic force would be anybody who challenges that hero from achieving that mission. And primarily, it's uh, in most mythological stories, it's the shadow figure. The person who embodies the hero's flaw and takes it a little bit further to the extreme. And we'll talk about that in a second, but think about it like this. An antagonist in its purest form could just be another hunter from a rival tribe that's trying to do the exact same thing. And they both just happen to be hunting the same deer or the same rabbit or the same buffalo. And so if hunter B is trying to prevent Hunter A from doing their job, even though they're trying to do the same thing, they're trying to catch a deer or an animal to bring it back to their, their tribe, they are, for all intents and purposes, the antagonist of that story. The villain, however, is someone who tries to prevent the hero and his team from doing things with an evil intent. What, is, what does that mean? What is evil intent? Essentially, that means you intend to do harm or cause suffering for other people purposefully. Not, not by accident. You didn't, you didn't like accidentally shoot your arrow and, and it missed the target and killed somebody or something. That's not. It, a villain is somebody who aimed at the hero and shot his arm or something like that. That's a villain. So that is the difference. Now, how? So going back to her question, those are the main differences. But now you can see how a hero who goes tragic can then become a villain. And a villain who, uh, you know, it has a redemptive arc, which we'll discuss in a, in a different video, could go hero. So there you go. What was the second question? I already forgot. I know you asked for examples. Um, the, the real main thing about a hero going tragic is that um, is that they they continue to embrace their flaw and this is the real thing even after they have been shown the what's called the psychological center or the psychological truth and um, and so an example would be <coughs> <clears throat> um, 
someone, let's say the hero of your story is someone who um, is in poor health and they have a heart attack or something. They go to the doctor and the doctor says, look, the reason why you had this heart attack is because you have been drinking too many cold brews and eating too much chicken <laughs> with biscuits and gravy. <laughs> and and then the hero is like, okay, I hear you, I'll stop. And then maybe they even go back and they try a little bit. Maybe they do some exercise. Maybe they maybe they eat a little healthier for the first day or two. But eventually they slide back into their old ways when nobody's looking, when they're not taking blood tests anymore. It could be six months down the road, whatever your story, you, right, is, is, is showing. And then all of a sudden they're back into their old ways and then they suffer from a heart attack and die or become, uh, this is terrible, but like paralyzed. That would be an example of a tragic hero. That's someone who was given the truth and told what to do to help revitalize society, to help overcome their flaw, but they didn't. And then what happened? They, they suffered a tragic consequence. Romeo and Juliet is a good example. Um, they, everybody, granted, the love that Rome, the love that Romeo and Juliet share, when you're a kid, when you're a teenager, you're like, oh man, like they're so passionate. But that that's really what Shakespeare was trying to get across is like, rather than being such such a passionate, uh, so, so quickly falling into love. I mean, think about it. In the beginning of the story, Romeo is is in despair because he just lost his cherished Rosaline, which was his last girlfriend, and. Then that night, Mercutio uh, talks him into going to the to the party, and there he meets Juliet. And all of a sudden, he's in love again. He's in, he's a love at first sight, and, and Juliet too. And so, it's a it's a warning tale about not to be so swift. And there's so many different um, impulsive. yeah, impulsive. There's so many different angles where he talks about that in, in the story like there's a there's a line where the the priest he's like uh, you know slow and steady those who run uh, trip and fall or something like that that's like a very famous line from the priest but it, it kind of fits like that's Romeo's problem he was he was told like hey slow down and and in the end Romeo's impulsiveness is what causes him to end in a tragic if he had only waited if he had only you know, listen to the advice he was given, then he would have found that Juliet wasn't really dead and they could have lived happily ever after and the priest's plan could have come to fruition and all this other stuff. So, um, King Lear. King Lear is someone who, um, you know, he goes through the entire story, he goes through the entire journey and at the end, only at the end, when all of the, the tragic stuff is happening, he's about to die, does he realize that his hubris has gotten the best of him and that he should have, um, you know, listened to his younger daughter, but Cordelia? No, I don't remember. I think Cordelia. It's been a while. So, um, let's see, Vader. I mean, we see what happens with Anakin and it takes, well, we'll talk about redemptive arcs, but it really takes Vader, like, seeing his son about to be killed by the guy that he's helped kill all of his other friends to realize like holy shit this is not not good um there were one or two other tragic people that I mentioned the other day can you remember examples I'm trying to think oh 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 Thorn Oakenshield um Thorin is tragic in the sense that he he fully gave in to his uh, the dragon's disease and let power kind of corrupt him and and even though he does have a redemptive arc um, it happened at the loss of like his character like his his men the people who were his friends Frodo like they all see him differently now that he's king under the mountain, so because he's not the king that they thought he would be, and then the, I think so. Those were all examples. Are there any other 
questions that you have? I know we've discussed a lot. We've discussed a lot here. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, like, it, what would this look like in real life? I mean, the one with the heart attack, I actually wasn't intending it to be, but it was a pretty good example. And with regard to people who are in um, some sort of recovery facility or what do you call the, the facilities that you work yeah, in? Like a rehab center. A rehab center. Um, it's going to be like, uh, you know, most people don't think they have a problem. Most smokers think they can quit at any time. Most people who do drugs think that they, they don't have a problem until they OD or until they get in an accident and they get hurt or someone else gets hurt. Those are all kind of tragic endings. And so um, there, there's two components. As a storyteller, if you're looking at this video and saying, okay, how can I create a tragic hero? I just told you. But from a real life perspective, what do those stories teach people about real life? And what are some real life examples? If something has been brought to your attention that this is holding you back and you're like, no, nah, no, nah, that's not me. You may want to reconsider because it wouldn't have been brought to your attention unless it was an issue. And especially if it's the, the thing that Susie and I are real big believers in is if everybody around you says that the sky is blue and you're the only one that thinks it's red, you're probably the one that's wrong. So um, whenever you find yourself in that situation, you really got to stop and ask, uh, maybe I have to reassess myself. And that is, for a hero and for people in real life, the hardest thing that they do, which is why they have rehab facilities in the first place. Right. Because people don't want to do it on their own. The other thing to consider with a tragic arc in like real life and in recovery is that when you're clean for a certain amount of time and we're talking about like maybe a year or two and you fall, if you fall back and you try and hit the same level that you were hitting before, like same dosage, same amount, same everything, that's when the ODs happen. So you literally become a tragic character. Right. And, and it, a statistic. That's yeah. that's the biggest thing that people don't realize. Like they're sitting there and they're like, I don't have a problem. And it's like, it, it, you said this to me the other day. Like one of the people that she's sitting there in the group with, they said, well, my situation is different. Yeah, everybody says that. Listen, bro, your situation isn't different. <laughs> if you're fat, you're a fat fuck because you didn't exercise and you ate some bullshit. If, you, if you're in a rehab facility, it's because you have a drug problem or an alcohol problem. Like, right. like well, those addiction problems, you want to say that yours is different, but they, oh, right. that's, they rhyme so hard. And by picking out the similarities, that's where the like winning combo. That's the ego trying to justify and convince itself that it's not part of the problem. And, and that is that is a fatal flaw that no matter what your problem is will get you you'll become another statistic and the, and I truly believe I think we both truly believe that the people who are the most successful and, and have the most growth are the ones who are willing and able to look at themselves just like a hero and say yo this is fucking up my life yeah I gotta get a hold of it I gotta take control right. of my city so, um, it's not just drugs and alcohol and stuff you can be addicted to. There's food, right? Like, how many times have you just tore through some ice cream? Like, you can be addicted to being anxious about Was that a personal dig? That really felt like a personal dig. <laughs> yeah. If you eat one pint of ice cream per night, but you only do it, like, twice a week... Okay, no, you still got a problem. That's very you got a specific. Problem. You, you have, it's you very have a problem. specific. You, you I feel like that's it. coming from a place. <laughs> Alright, so anything else? We're pretty good on this one? I feel good about this one. Alright, we're gonna wrap this up because the more I drive, the more the video camera is going lower and lower and we can we have to duck down to even be in the video anymore. So uh, again, this has been Auto Susie and Josh Miss Prime coming at you from Polymathics, the channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man or woman. 
And this message was also brought to you in part by Story Ninjas, Stories That Pack a Punch. Go, go ahead and check us out at www.story-ninjas.com. Until next time.